Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jasper Chung, and today I'll be talking about my paper titled Toxicity and Teratogenicity Assessment Using Zebrafish Daniorerio Embryo of Synthesized Zinc Oxide Nanomaterials Grown by Horizontal Vapor Phase Growth Technique. Let's start with the introduction. Despite not as important nor urgent as the research in the current pandemic rampaging the world, nano safety is still one of the important fields in modern science. Amongst the three most popular material, namely titanium dioxide, silicon dioxide, and zinc oxide, zinc oxide is one that are more related to our daily lives. The reason of this being its application is mostly correlated to beauty products and medicine. The most iconic being sunscreen. Zinc nano, nano zinc oxide's property includes one being its ability to reflect ultraviolet light, therefore making it popular in obviously sunscreen industry. During the research of zinc oxide, it is interesting to note that in the late 19th, 20th century, most of the researchers decided that zinc oxide nanomaterials to be non-toxic. But when it came to the earlier 21st century, this is however disproved uh, or let's say argued on which makes this interesting to research. And therefore, decided to conduct an experiment on it. The structure of this experiment includes first, the preparation of nanocrystals or nanomaterials, then the characterization, characterization of said nanocrystals. After that, the characterized nanocrystals are used in the toxicity and teratogenicity assay and observe and analyze. Let's start with the preparation. Uh, in the industry standard, most of the nanocrystals are size less than 113 nanometers. Uh, with this, uh, well, with this parameter uh, and without a reliable source dictating which particular size and shape, I'm sorry, which particular shape of crystal are used, the horizontal vapor phase growth technique is selected. Horizontal vapor phase growth can, is origin, uh, well, first visualized in 2011. Uh, to explain this, uh, I would use another diagram. When horizontal vapor phase growth technique is used for a synthesis, synthesis of nanocrystals, first a quartz tube is needed. Within the quartz tube, there will be some uh, macro materials, in this case, zinc oxide powder uh, placed in one end then the quartz tube would be sucked into a state of vacuum. Late, well, using the word suck is um, it's hard to visualize, but it's actually a very slow process to not disturb the macro material within. But anyways, after it reaches the state of vacuum, the quartz tube is then torched by a blowtorch to seal. And then having the sealed vacuum quartz tube placed in a horizontal furnace as visualized on the diagram. The macro materials will be inside the furnace at the hotter end. Uh, as the temperature heats up, the macro materials would vaporize and as it in vaporizes, it becomes gas and then it would spread towards places without gas. Uh, and when it reaches the outer side 
or as known as the cooler side of the quartz tube, it would then condense and then grow into crystals. Despite not being able to dictate its particular shape, it is quite reliable in producing similar size. In a previous diagram, right, there are some parameters that can produce sizes of nanocrystals smaller than 130, well, mostly smaller than 130 nanometers. And I, with this diagram, three groups were selected. They all have the same dwell time, which is the time of the crystal being in the furnace, the same ramp time, which is the time for the furnace to heat up. Please note that in this case, well, due to the pre-existing guideline, sometimes it may differ. But in this case, the ramp time is included in the dwell time. The ramp time of 20 minutes included in the eight hours dwell time. This is important for the ramp rate determination uh, and information for anyone who wants to replicate this technique. Uh, well, anyway, crystals are separated into three groups, group A, B, and C. The difference being their bake temperature, group A being the lowest at 800 degrees Celsius, group B at 1000 degrees, and group C at 1200 degrees Celsius. And these are the expected nanostructures that they may produce. Note that some actually have, have bigger sizes than 130 nanometers, but in the case of nanocrystals, the bigger the size, the less the toxicity. That, well, if it is toxic. Uh, to put it more frankly, or, or easier to understand, as the sizes double, it is actually 75% less toxic. So with some of them being bigger than 130 nanometers, it actually falls out of the concern. After the crystals are baked, they then have to go through SEM and EDX analysis. SEM stands for scanning, electros uh, scanning Electron Microscopy, and EDX stands for Energy Dispersive X-ray. What you can see on the screen is an EDX analysis. The purpose of using EDX is to determine any impurities. Uh, an EDX scan would note that uh, the energy level of SIM, well, what supposedly should be inside the scan sample. And with that, we determine that the impurities, or rather it, possible impurities within the sample are actually less than 0.1%, which makes the sample 99.9% .9 pure, which is pretty high. After that, they are then put under an SEM put under an SEM scan. The SEM, uh, the electrosco scanning electron microscopy and show the size, uh, sizes, uh, the precise sizes and shapes of the crystal. Uh, these are one of the, these are some of the pictures taken. Uh, in this case, this one has a petal-like, like flower-like structure kind of hard to see. This one looks like rock. And then there are nano wires at different magnification. And to sum it up, these are, these are the diagram. Note that some are bigger, but as discussed earlier, the bigger, the less toxic, therefore not a concern. With that, we move on to the toxicity and teratogenicity assay using Zebrafish. Zebrafish, Daniel Rerio, is a uh, freshwater fish native to South Asia. It is actually quite popular in recent science as a lab animal. This is, there are three reasons behind this. First, being its fast growth time. It grows really fast, 
and reproduce really fast, which makes it extremely cheap compared to, let's say, a lab rat. Second, it has all its genetic sequence documented, and among it, 69% of it is exactly the same as mammalian creature, which is pretty, which is pretty nice. And third, which is another interesting thing, as you can see on the screen, a zebrafish embryo is actually transparent, which makes it really easy to view under a microscope. You don't even have to cut it out. It's just there. Everything is there for you to view. With the eggs of the zebrafish, the experiment starts at having seven wells like it, it's hard to see but seven wells there are six and another one at the side not on the picture seven wells of hmm, of samples uh, these are namely first a uh, zebrafish embryo and this day of although in this picture eggs zebrafish eggs and water this is the negative control. There are not, no nanocrystals are added. Then group A, the ones baked at 800 degrees, has two wells, one, at, one with the concentration of 10 ppm for a lower dose reference and 100 ppm for a higher dose. This is the same for group B and C. So each group has a low dose and high dose, six in total, plus the negative control, seven. Each day the water are changed the new, to make sure they have enough oxygen and the concentration of the nanocrystals despite being absorbed stays relatively the same. This experiment ends at day five, 150 hours post fertilization. This is due to the zebrafish being more defined at that stage. This 150 hours post fertilization is technically the, uh, technically when an adult zebrafish is defined. At this stage, they stop depending on their yolk sac and have to hunt for themselves. In this experiment, then, it ends here. But we kept the fish around in the laboratory for several more days just for observation purpose. They are not experimental anymore. During the experiment, we notice malformation, which means the nanocrystals are somewhat genotoxic, which is, means it's toxic to genes. It alterates the growth, the growth of cell, and amongst which it can be summed up to three. The first one is the most, uh, let's say, the most severe, a combined cardiac and yolk sac edema with a shortened tail. This fish did not live long. Then there is the bent spine, which makes the fish hard to swim. Uh, it, it is also determined that it would not live long. And actually, any of the malformed zebrafish does not live long. They do like even if they grow up, they cannot hunt for themselves. Uh, even within the stage of uh, within the comfort of the laboratory, they cannot swim very well and would end up starving themselves. Well, enough about that. Lastly, there is also the bent tail. Uh, they are all documented and this is the result. You can note that in the lower dose, there are actually more, case of, more cases of malformation. Uh, and then in the then there, here are the mortality rate, which is, means the percentage of dead fish actually died during the experiment. Uh, well, despite it is hard to understand just by the looks of it, after calculation using ANOVA, it is determined that it actually has a significant impact whether or not the fish are introduced to 
nanocrystals. And from that to, despite I know I skipped a lot of step, I would not like to bore people with the science behind this. And this is for people who actually want to read on the journal. The result here can show that zinc oxide nanocrystal is both cytotoxic and genotoxic, which completely disproves the uh, early, well, actually, sorry. Yeah, technically earlier stage, I was about to say late 20th century researches. And it more in lines with the current, the current, uh, the more popular assessment recently. And despite not being part of the experiment, we also noticed a difference in dead time. To explain this, it is possible, but not confirmed, that during the earlier stage and higher dose, uh, the zebrafish malform less because of their, the ones that are more impact, impacted by the zinc oxide died faster and the buildup of nanocrystals could still be lethal in the later stage. Not confirmed uh, because it is not part of the experiment, but this is what could be a possible note. Uh, there is actually not much result yielded by this experiment compared to most other ones because of first, it is a smaller scale, and then second, the limitation of nano, uh, sorry, the growth technique, HPVG technique, uh, without a determination of which exact shape is causing the malformation or death, we cannot really conclude that much. So I hope this paper can be one of the stepping stones that people read on, and I hope it may help in the development of science. That will be all for now. Thank you very much for listening or watching this. I am Jasper Chang. I hope, I wish you a pleasant day. Uh, God be with you.